Wild Boys just for some reason has this mind of its own and like so many things that we filmed we've realized like it would be so much funnier if we like were naked or were acting like we were maybe gay. <laughs> so we started to make a conscious effort to be less gay but that didn't really work out because we just tend to always end up making things gay. <laughs> I felt that we were alienating our demographic with all of our homoerotic humor. So it was in India that I made a very like conscious and deliberate decision that I wasn't gonna be homoerotic. Can we try one where Steve is the woman? I really don't wanna be the woman. You gotta do one. You yeah. gotta do one. Funny. It's gonna be so it's so funny. So it's not gay at all. Uh, so you guys are trying to make me mad, dude. And I'm good. trying then not to be mad. You'll be good if you're mad. You're trying not to be mad. All right. I'm telling you, like, you gotta do it. Like I had to scream at him. It's like Steve just let him he was like, no, dude, I'm not that dude, dude. I'm not trying, trying to piss you off. Me off. And I'm fucking pissed I'm off. I'm not trying to piss you off. All right, let's wrap off. this up. Relax, dude. Hey, man, relax. Uh, we're, no, we're not wrapping up. We're, we're going to do a couple more whatever. All right, well, no, stop fucking try trying to piss, piss me off. off okay? All right, well, I'm telling you, I'm fucking pissed off, so stop pissing me off. I'm not trying to piss All you right. off. Steve-O freaked out because he didn't want to be a part of this lovemaking lesson and, like, tore off in a rampage. It was innocent, and I overreacted, and... And then I just realized I'd picked the wrong week to stop acting gay. Oh, he is a slimy little bastard. He's so long. Ah. Mm. <laughs> We're the Golden Dome Cabaret in Bangkok. This is Gang, and he is going to show us how to get totally freaky. <laughs> it's like this Las Vegas-style showgirl thing where they, they sing and they dance and like, in like these little outfits with feathers everywhere and stuff. And there's these beautiful women, but there's one catch. They're not really women, they're, they have penises. I started out really bummed out on the Golden Dome. I was in one of my sort of like, I don't want to seem homosexual phases. If anyone so much as touches my dick, I'm the fuck out of there. And that's all there is to it. That's fine. And I know it's going to happen in the first two seconds, so this is going to be over. Don't flatter yourself, sister. You're not that hot. <laughs> Can I? Can I say the same, like, too? Like, I don't want to be touched on the penis either. I'm not going to touch you, dude. I've seen, like, you know, fake titties on these dudes. Like, real. Like, they got implants. They didn't get, like, huge ones. They got, like, B-sized titties, and they were topless in there. And you're kind of checking them out, and you're like, okay, you know, that's kind of hot. You're seeing a little nipple. But then you're like, wait a minute, dude. That's a dude. The things that transvestites look so much like girls that it was, like, a scary situation. You know, you might end up in a homosexual act if you're not careful. When you see them, they're really hot. It's pretty hard to believe. Our, our sound engineer, Cordell, had a very hard time believing it. <laughs> and I'm gonna leave it at that. The one in the white right here. <laughs> she has big ones. The sound guy is just gayer than a lake full of pink fish. I was uncomfortable about looking at a man and saying, I think that man's hot. And if I didn't know he was a man, I would make love to him. I was dressed up like a little fat girl. <laughs> I looked like Reese Witherspoon from uh, The Addams Family, but normal as a fat girl. Not Reese Witherspoon's album. I'm trying to think of her name. They were very, very beautiful women that weren't really women. And I know this because I was in the dressing room and I saw their, their penises. <laughs> Those were the longest vaginas I'd ever seen. <laughs> we usually go to one location, spend two weeks there and try to shoot two shows. Uh, and our show is just cut at such a furious pace that we need to film a lot of bits. So a lot of times we split crews. And uh, when we do that, I'll take one of the guys, Steve or Chris, and Dimitri will take the other one, and uh, we sort of have this rivalry uh, to see who can get the best footage. There's always been this really healthy rivalry between Chris and I, where if he does something and gets amazing footage, then I just like I'm just jealous. I'm like, oh man! And so then that lights a fire under my ass, and I want to get footage, and we really just motivate each other. So, like, just healthy competition, and it works with our director and co-director the same way. I feel I usually win, but I could be wrong. One time I know I lost, and I'm pissed off about this to the day. We are at this beach in Argentina, and this particular spot, it gets deep extremely quick right at the shoreline. 
So this pod of orcas there has figured out that they can grab seals right off the beach. First day, Steve O was with them, and the weather just didn't permit the whales to come up and kill the seals. But the next day, um, we just said, all right, we'll take a limited crew there, and I'll take Steve O off, and we'll go try to film something else. And sure enough, it happened. Come on. Oh my god. Oh my god. Dude. It is a splash in it. Now that's entertainment. The whole reason, you know, we picked Argentina to shoot, I missed, and I'm pissed about it because I really wanted to see some seals get their heads bit off. It's weird, it's sad on one hand the baby seals are getting eaten, but then on one hand it's rad because the baby seals are getting eaten. Here it comes again. <laughs> Some people have been waiting now for seven to eight to 10 days, scientists in little foxholes on the beach waiting for this to happen. And we showed up and it happened on the second day we were there. I seriously think mother nature has made us her mouthpiece. Cause like most nature shows, like they have, they spend years like waiting to get this footage and we'll show up these places that we have one day to get it and we'll get it. Like some natural phenomenon, we're just there. I don't know why she chose us, but she did. Did the Wild Boys come to Tlack Hotel Pond to run with the bulls alone? Hell no. We're going to do it with the whole crew and the town. Yeah! I'm pretty brave with all animals, but I am fucking terrified of bulls. The whole town comes out. They rip some branches off some trees and stick them in the ground and make this haggard bull ring. They bring in the bulls. They couldn't even get the bulls into the bull ring. It's just like mayhem in the streets, and people are getting annihilated. <laughs> It's not like an animal. It's an animal in the sense that it has a heart and a brain, a small one, and an angry one. But just, they don't work like the way other animals do. We had just thought that these people knew what they were doing. Then we get in the ring and they didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> The bull run just runs through the streets and then they round up the bull and drag it into this ring. This just makeshift little bull ring where everyone is just tormenting the bull and this kid just got smoked by the bull. Oh, it was just so hairy to see that. At that point, I just, I looked over at Dimitri, I'm like, no, man, this is done. Get out, dude, get out, get out. We thought we were going to like a fun, loving, yearly celebration for the whole town and you know we we thought we watched someone get killed in season four we got to shoot with a bunch of rappers like i don't know we've we've tried to get celebrities involved uh pretty much throughout and we usually just get a no <laughs> we got to shoot with a bunch of rappers juvenile cash money millionaires baby and then the best though was the three six mafia they drove, I think, six hours. They drove from Memphis to Knoxville, and our call time was 9 o'clock, and they were there on time, ready to shoot, and just so just alive and, and with gusto. Let's yeah, go, we get... party! Yeah! We went to see these rappers, and Steve said, okay, let's rap, and all of a sudden, it's like, uh, come to mind. So right away, I rapped about what the Wild Boys are about. From the ghetto to the swamp, beating holes every night. Wild Boys, you heard me. Yeah. <laughs> we are the best wildlife group out there. You know, uh, the other guys are really lame compared to what we're doing. We're more extreme and all that stuff. Uh, it's all about extreme, not so much scientific. You know, so it was it was a good session. I guess like you know, just like everybody else. They know that once you move from MTV to MTV2, that you're rolling in the dough, you know? It's like there's no competition, you get all the money. So now that we have all the money, of course rappers want to hang out with us. Sort of, sh sh you know, show off bling to each other and shit like that. Location, location, location. That's why I go on the Wild Boys trips. Uh, I love traveling and there isn't a worse bunch of uh, people to travel with. I don't know, it's like uh, a big uh, extended dysfunctional family. And plus, they pick up the bar tabs usually. So uh, I can't afford not to go. Well, for starters, like, you know, our approach to Wild Boys has really been just sort of to travel the world and, and 
be ambassadors of goodwill, you know? Even if you're on the side of a curb in a dirt pile, as long as you're with people that you like, like it doesn't really matter where you're at. Uh, I always like just being around them. Pretty much every culture that the Wild Boys uh, encountered, we bring our spirit to them as much as we get from them. There's definitely a serious side to Wild Boys insofar as like taking people seriously and not disrespecting them, you know? Like we want to be outrageous and, you know, make people laugh, but it's always been important to us to respect people. There's danger, there's gross. Uh, everything they do I find incredibly hilarious and the nasty stuff they do is just, uh, I have to go like this when I'm behind camera, cover my mouth just to keep from bursting out in laughter every time they're doing something. Uh, uh, I mean, I was a fanatic of Three Stooges, but this is so much better. You know, it's danger. Uh, it's my element in, involved. It's Discovery Channel, National Geographic's Three Stooges, Beavis and Butthead. It's just everything combined in one to create a, a most awesome episodes ever. Ich bin Weeman and ich habe viel Spaß spielen mit Elephant Scheiße. Of course, traveling the world, I've picked up, you know, a lot from the cultures that I met along the way. I mean, look at me. I mean, I'm like, uh, I mean, look at me. I can't believe that we're all like such a bunch of idiots and we get to do the coolest stuff in the world. That's why we made up this show. So are we, are we really that big of idiots?